Thank you. Next speaker is Damien Goodman. Damien Goodman says his campaign fix the Expo Rail Line. You're so getting sued. <laughs> I, I'll bet you, I'll bet you your mustache and my mustache that you'll be in court in 2010, 2011, 2012, and you might have a project to build if you change enough of it in 2015. But no way are you opening in 2015. You deserve to be sued. When I think of a project, I think of three words, incompetence, abuse, and, construct, and, 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 and corruption. Incompetence, this is simple. You're building at-grade crossings in the congestion capital of the country. You're building at-grade crossings with the former rail safety, the former chairman of all rail safety accidents in the country for NTSB is saying that if they don't qualify for grade separation from a safety perspective, no crossing would. You're, now we've got any abuse. You've got the environmental justice issue, and I want to spend some time talking about that here because there are groups like Bell for Shaking French Rexpo who've been manipulating what that means. To be clear, environmental justice doesn't mean you kill a white kid in West LA for every black kid you kill in South LA. You've built total grade separation in Culver City because that city demanded it. If that's good for Culver City, that's good for LA east of Culver City, and that's good for LA west of Culver City. Regarding the corruption, Bernard Parks, who sits on your board, has taken over $150,000 from MTA contractors. You, Mr. Polacronis, Vice President Dem Jim Harris, have given to Jan Perry and Antonio Villagosa money. So I'm supposed to be using this time to ask a question, so here it goes. When you gave the money to Jan Perry when she was the chair of the Export Authority, exactly what were you expecting? I do want to mention that on the phase one project, uh, the reason that the grade crossing happened in Culver City at the Venice Robertson Station, in fact, isn't because Culver City demanded it. They did, but that isn't the reason. When we did that uh, project, when we did that project, uh, we had always said that when we do the full permanent station between Venice and National, that, that was going to be an aerial station. It was always the case. In order to get across, in order to get up in the air to do that, uh, you need to grade separate Washington and National. Venice was always going to be grade separated if it was crossed, and so that was part of the plan. Originally, that we were going to do a temporary station because there wasn't enough money to fund the permanent station. That money became available with the passage of Proposition 1B a couple of years ago, and so the permanent station was built with those grade separations at Washington and National because there's not enough distance to cross them that grade and then get up and, and then get up for the permanent station. Second question. Second question. Did Dan Jim Harris contributions to Jan Perry and Antonio Rogoso? I live in this city, I support a lot of good folks. Before we move on with the next speaker. I, I had 26 seconds left. I'm looking at the exposition lack of grade crossing recommendations for phase one. Washington at grade. Jefferson at grade. National at grade. What happened between the creation of this document and the final DEIR or final EIR? Uh, a couple of things happened. One was the uh, temporary station uh, did have the at grade crossing, the permanent station did not. The second is that the metro grade crossing policy was approved uh, during the development of that project. This is it. And in fact, this is it, right here. The grade crossing. You can look at it if you want to. I mean, if you want me to answer a question, I will. If Truthful, you don't, I, will. I don't need an untruthful answer. I mean, you can look at this. You, here, I, take I, I was, I was, I'm not going to debate you. I was there. I did the work, so I'm telling you what happened. Do you want to see what it says? Mr. Goodman, we have What's a lot that? of speakers to get through, so if you can please let it respond, and then we can move on to the I, next speaker. You're saying it's not the great crossing policy. This is it. Here, take it. If you don't believe it, you read it. Okay, we're going to move on to our next speaker, but before we do, will Patrick Murray, DJ Wax, Donna Glass, please, please line up at the microphone. Our next speaker is Clint Simmons. Uh, my name is Clint Simmons. I'm with Expo Community United. I'm part of the Exposition Light Rail number one, phase one. And first of all, I'd like to say to people here tonight that represent MTA, our PR people, these are public relations people. They're so quite natural. They're here to put the best spin on it as possible, but push this on safe line through your community. Uh, the next thing I want to speak about, uh, this, the presenter showed a film of trees. I like to know where those trees are located. Yeah. 
I've been living in that area for about 47 years and over 50 years within uh, two miles of the particular area. There was just no space to put the trees. I like to know where you're going to put them between Western Avenue and Vermont, unless you want to take part of Exposition Boulevard and put it into a garden of some kind. There's Don't just nothing there at all. And when you show this kind of stuff, it's misleading to people. They think they're going to have trees and green along the track, and that's not the case at all. And I like to say to those of you who are here, part phase two, you can't rely on the California Public Tissue Committee, got a commission to help you at all. They're either one or two things. They're either incompetent or they are corrupt. In 1911, the California Rail Commission was formed because Southern Pacific was too big and they wanted to uh, prevent them from controlling the politics in the state. Now MTA controls the CPUC. In other words, they do whatever the uh, MTA requests them to do. The LADOT, the head of LADOT, would do whatever the mayor says. And she is his pet. He put her on the MTA after pointing her to the to head up the LA Department of Transportation. So therefore, it's going to be left up to the people with legal means in the court system. That is the only way that we're going to make MTA do things right, because there will be an environmental justice suit filed against them. That I can guarantee you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to, uh, to question the audience on that landscaping question. The, 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 uh, the right of way is different widths as you go from downtown to Santa Monica. Some quite wide, uh, 100, in some cases more than 100 feet wide. Other places barely enough to get the two tracks in. So some areas, like uh, in the area of Westwood Gardens and Westwood, Westwood, for example, we've got quite a wide right of way and we are proposing to do landscaping. In other areas, uh, particularly as you go further east, uh, the right of way gets quite skinny and there isn't room to put it in. So it depends on the area that uh, we are at. The area that I was showing in the simulation is, of course, the uh, Overland West of Westwood, Westwood Gardens area where the right of way is quite wide and where we would expect to put a landscape. Before we move on, I want to just take a moment to make it clear that we have a lot of speakers who wish to speak tonight. In order for us to get through all the speakers and have everybody get a chance to comment, I'm going to ask that you please make all your comments or ask all your questions within your two minutes, and then we're going to go ahead and do a response to that. So please, within the two minutes, ask all your questions, all your comments. We're not going to be stopping in the middle of the two minutes. That's going to get too confusing, and we're not